um, here's this new feature again, um, the motion prediction module that uh, we have in PD Pro Howler version 7.2. And to get an understanding of uh, another example of where you can use that, here's a, a little 3D animation rendered in Carrara. Um, this is actually a preset scene, but I've added just my own animation to it. If I play that. Um, it's a fairly small animation. It took a little while to render on a slow machine. Uh, it's got some um, Oh, some fairly high realistic settings and so on. It's not perfect. You can see a little bit of noise because of the approximation. I took some shortcuts. And it's a very short animation. It's got only about 30 frames. Right? And so let's say we needed this to go a little bit slower and have more frames. Still last two or three seconds uh, or even longer. Uh, one way to do that is to, um, to use simply uh, a time stretch in uh, Project Dog Waffle, where every frame is repeated five times or ten times or whatever you need. And, and so you see it slow down there, it takes much longer to play, but each frame is held in place for you know almost a second, so it looks a little bit like it's stuttering or it's uh, stopping and go and stopping and go and so on. So it's not really a smooth animation. But that's to be expected. This is called um, basically the, the time um, splitting uh, or time stretching rather time stretch but without the uh, frame blending okay so time stretch no frame blending and then if you do it with uh, frame blending uh, one problem that you run into is that you get this blurring towards the transition from one frame to the other you, you see that at the edge right up here let's let's go back to the beginning right here at the bottom you see it there's like a, a blending in and out as it's transitioning from one frame and that's the frame blending that we're doing. So that's uh, also to be expected and it's unfortunately one of the side effects. The nice thing is you, you can specify exactly how many frames you want and it will do a fairly good job at giving you that and transitioning from one frame to the next. Uh, here we may have 10 times more frames than the original so it's, it's turning into a fairly slow and smooth animation. If there are parts that are not moving fast, that's fine, but if they're moving fast, like this edge here at the top or the corner of the, uh, the back side of the hammer, you can definitely see a fairly uh, almost obnoxious uh, transition effect. And that's what we're trying to work around with the motion prediction module. So um, this one is the same scene with about the same number of frames, rendered through or re-rendered through the motion prediction module starting from the original 30 frames. Um, it's not perfect either, but it's much better, I think, than the frame blending done on the time stretch. Uh, it's got one limitation, which is on the edges. If you, if you look at the edges, you'll see some artifacts, like just around here. That's not really good, but you can always crop that out, right? If you, if you don't care for what's going on on the edges, sometimes that's in the safe zone outside of what you really want to look at. Anyway, you could crop and rescale, or you could have rendered, maybe you can render this at uh, larger than what you really need, so it gives you a margin, a zone around the actual picture that you really want to see. And um, you can run it through the motion prediction module to give you some nice transitions. And then you can crop away the stuff that you really don't care to see on the edges. Uh, you see that down here also. So um, that's, the, that's the magic here. Uh, not a whole lot of magic really. And it's not always going to work. But uh, this one here seems to have worked pretty nicely. So you can make a much nicer smoother transition and animation. And you didn't have to wait hours for the whole rendering because this one was done with the, the high-end settings and indirect lighting and a couple of other options, uh, very high, maybe um, high quality anti-aliasing and so on. And that all can add a lot to your rendering time. So if it takes an hour per frame on a 200 frame animation, uh, wouldn't it be nice if you could bring it down to just uh, 40 or 50 frames and then use the motion prediction module to extrapolate or interpolate and produce additional frames in between and uh, doing so may take maybe one minute per frame rather than one hour per frame. And that's what we're seeing here. Let's uh, have a look perhaps one more last time at the side-by-side uh, -side comparison.